Well, hello. I'm just going to do a uh, brief overview showing off how to draw with the UCS a little better. Uh, you know, obviously, at this point, you're pretty familiar with the drawing process. It's just how to get it translated to 3D. And uh, as you've probably already noticed, AutoCAD 3D is not super friendly. So uh, I'm hoping to alleviate that a little bit. I'm going to open up Inventor after I draw this profile, and I'll show kind of what the basic concept is of the UCS because a lot of people are able to work with it but they don't actually understand what's going on with it. So uh, let's get started. I'm gonna do a line and I'm just gonna do it at zero 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 and I always suggest doing it at zero zero zero. Um, it's just a good rule of thumb if you wanna you know ensure accuracy. It's easy to start in the middle uh, when you're using your 3D mouse it'll work better. It's just all around a good move. Uh, and I'm just gonna draw a random shape did too long so let's do I want it to look different so if I move it around you can tell what's going on so something like this and I'm gonna close it for whatever reason it doesn't look like there's a line there man it is acting funny there's a line okay weird okay so first things first if I were to casually go and pivot this around you can see there's this grid it's persistent it stays down there <clears throat> So this is the entire concept of the UCS. Essentially, this manipulator uh, and this grid indicate what you're using for an active 3D space. So like right now, if I wanted to make this into a box and extrude it, essentially, I would use press pull. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't say, hey, you can do this area. You know, I could click an edge and it's going to let me do it up and down, but it's not really giving me the option to press pull it. And that is where you get into the idea of using the UCS, as lame as this is. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna pull over Inventor here and uh, show the basic concept here. We're buffering. Okay, so uh, if I were to go and draw just a random box to make this quick and extrude it out, There we go. Okay, we've got a box. Awesome. So, um, you know, in Inventor or 3D program, which you should be familiar with as well, uh, the idea is you would start a sketch. You know, you could use a plane to draw. You could choose a face. Although, if you choose a face like this, technically, as you can see, the grid is there. This is essentially being indicated as a plane. Um, typically, I always draw on planes, of course. But that's what you're doing at, at the very beginning of every 3D sketch is you are... 2D sketch in a 3D program, um, but you are always choosing a base location to draw, and everything is based on that. Well, in the same vein, in AutoCAD, that's what you're doing. So like right now, we're drawing perpendicular to the plane. It doesn't know what's going on. And you can tell, because when you select everything, you see, man, I don't know why the zoom is so bad. <coughs> you can see uh, these little square grips. And if you notice, they're not facing the way that you would think they would face. You would think they would be vertical, but they're actually uh, parallel to this gri grid. It's really a plane, honestly, but grid. So basically, you know, you can tell looking that these are not in the direction we need them to be. And this is where you have to manipulate things. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, it depends on the location of your part and what you need to accomplish. So right now, all we need is the plane to rotate. So in this case, I can just change this world option on the... Um, well, first of all, if you are unaware, you have to be in a 3D modeling workspace. If you're not, uh, the easiest thing I suggest doing is to hit this little checkbox, check the workspace button, and this allows you to have a drop down where you can choose it, put it on. So, uh, you know, then you're on the home tab, you have the coordinates option, and this is where you have a ton of cool stuff. I only use this drop down, I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I think it's great, it works fine. So, world is based on your absolute origin, always, zero, zero, zero. So um, the only time that you would put this back on is if you're basically wanting to see it in true shape. Because watch this view cube when I change it. Watch the grid. Okay. So now you see the actual positions have changed. The grid's changed. Your drawing stays the same. But essentially you're manipulating the 3D environment. So, uh, you know, that's why you want to put it back in world sometimes. To make sure you're not drawing things crooked or something. Uh, and also it just looks better. <laughs> okay. So in this case... Just to go ahead and make that press pull so I can show you more stuff, I want to do 
the angle that this plane is on, okay, or theoretical plane, this sketch. So looking at the view cube, that means that I want the plane parallel to the sketch, which would be front. So I'm going to change this to front. And now, when I select everything, you see the squares are parallel to the, uh, the actual plane we're drawing on. And if I were to go and try to do a press pull, it works just like that. So, uh, <laughs> as silly as that is, you just have to make sure you're working in the right direction. And then when you're done, like I said, put it back on world. And uh, as you'll see, if you manage to select the sketch, it still reorients those. Technically, the sketch geometry is separate from the model. So, in theory, if you really hated those sketches, I messed up, but you could actually go and delete your sketch items. It's really hard, and I would suggest just leaving it, honestly, but <coughs> it's up to you. So, anywho, that's great. This happened to be in 000. I could just rotate it, and that worked fine. But what if it doesn't happen to be that easy? Well, that's where you have to learn how to manipulate the actual uh, UCS rather than just flipping to the presets. You have to make your own. So we could start with front, but say I want to make a hole on the backside here. The grid's way over there. How am I going to make a sketch? Well, it's easy. You actually just select this little manipulator here. You select it one time. You click move by, well, you know, you can, you can also do these options, but I actually just clip this, the um, grip and then I'm just pivoting slowly and then I could just move it to the end point. So now our plane's in the right spot. Uh, but you can take this a couple steps further if you want. You can also click the manipulator and you can do some rotations here. Um, you can actually save a default UCS, kind of like up here, uh, which it actually does when you adjust things. It makes it unnamed. So say you plan on working on one face a lot, you could go through, save copies of that. Um, you can do a lot of stuff, but you know, mostly what people use is rotate axis. Uh, I don't really care for that. <laughs> for me, I would rather actually just do the grips. So, you know, say I want to flip something, I can move the planes doing this. I can do the same thing. It's really hard to hit the uh, the actual grips. Make sure you're looking for that red spot. But, you know, I can position it like so, uh, or whatever, you know, and that's the cool part about it is it's uh, pretty easy to actually go and manipulate. But obviously, at the end of the day, you want to always make sure that Z is up. And I don't know why this is, <laughs> honestly. Uh, in Inventor and stuff, you know, Z is obviously not what's up, but whatever. So in this case, I'm going to flip Y back up. And if I wanted to go and draw on this lower face here, I could just move this point. If I can get a hold of it. And now, you know, I could go through and on this little tiny face, which seems to want to not exist, I could draw that and do a press pull through. And just like that, we've got a, a big old random rod coming out of the other face, <laughs> whatever. But you know, the idea is basically that you have these presets. Uh, they're great for you know certain use cases, depending on where you're at. But when that doesn't work, that's where the manipulator comes in. Uh, it's super old school, but it is pretty effective. So uh, keep that in mind. And if anybody has any questions about the UCS, just let me know.